Hello class, my name is Amir. Uh, I'm a fourth year neuroscience student at UCLA and today along with my friends over here we're going to talk to you about drugs and your brain. Um, we're not here to judge, we're not here to ask you what kind of drugs you've done or anything like that. We would appreciate it if you didn't ask us any of those questions as well, but we're just here to educate you and let you know more about drugs and how they affect your brain. So as we begin, I want to ask you what is the brain based on what you've learned in classes or what you may have heard? Control center. Helps you control think. Center. Think helps you head. think. Great, great. These are all great points. So just to give you some uh, random facts about the brain. So the brain contains one trillion cells. So if you could imagine, I forgot the analogy, if you include the money analogy, but include that right now. Uh, <laughs> that's how much one trillion is going to be. Uh, besides that, one neuron, which is one brain cell, could have up to 1,500 synapses. Now synapses are the connections that your, your brain cells have with each other. So if you could imagine how we're talking to each other, one neuron can basically talk to 1,500 other neurons. Now the consistency is a bit of hard jello, and during our breakout sessions you're going to see, you're going to get a chance to feel the brain and see what it actually feels like, but it may feel a little bit different than what you would expect. And aside from that, when you're awake, your brain produces enough electricity to power up a small light bulb. Pretty cool, right? So going into the structure of a neuron, in the most basic sense, we have dendrites, a nucleus right there in the middle, and an axon. Now all these different parts of the brain uh, of the neuron have a different role in uh, synapse and connections, making connections with other neurons. Now, like I mentioned, synapses are how the neurons communicate. So as you can see here, we have one neuron over here, the sending neuron, and the receiving neuron over here. And if you look closely, it looks like they're almost touching each other, but in reality, they're not. If we go take a closer look, we see there's this tiny gap right over here where the synapse is formed. So we have these signaling molecules known as neurotransmitters. Now they're sent from the sending neuron to the receiving neuron, and right here, the neurotransmitters are gonna connect to their specific receptors. Now, two neurotransmitters that are pretty important for the drugs that we're going to talk about are serotonin and dopamine. Now, these are very important for mood, reward, pleasure, and even learning and memory. Every single day, you're going to be using serotonin and, and dopamine. And if you haven't noticed, these are like the molecular structures over here and the shapes of the guitar and the drums that they're playing. Just a cool picture that I wanted to throw in. Now to go on to drug use, abuse, and addiction. So as you can see, there are many, many different types of drugs, drug categories, but we're only going to go over a few of them today. So I want to ask you, why do people take drugs? Feels good. Feels good? Your okay. Friends are doing it. Friends are doing it? Because it's fun. Because it's fun. I don't know how fun it could be, but we'll see. Because I don't like real life. <laughs> <laughs> see, I mean, as you can see, uh, it feels good to fit in curiosity. These are all very common reasons for why people take drugs. And peer pressure is very common. Athletic and academic performance is another one. You could look scary like this guy. And many artists claim that, make this claim that drugs can help them uh, do better in their performances. But as we'll find out, that may not necessarily be true. Now, there's something called the reward pathway that we're going to talk about. The reward pathway is basically a series of different parts of your brain that come to work together to give you that sense of pleasure when you do certain things that are, well, pleasurable. For example, eating is one thing that will activate your reward pathway. Drugs is another thing that will uh, affect your reward pathway. And so that's another reason why drugs will make you feel good, like we mentioned earlier. The problem is, taking drugs for a long period of time can really change your brain circuitry. So you're literally changing up those synapses, those connections that you make in the brain, either adding more, losing some, or just changing up the connections, which affects your brain in a variety of ways. And one of the worst ways that it can do that is by causing addiction. Now, in addiction, you're no longer taking the drug because it feels good, but rather you're taking the drug to relieve those negative symptoms that you feel when you're not taking the drug known as withdrawal symptoms. So as you can see, smoking is, an, is one common uh, form of addiction. So you start off getting pleasure from um, smoking cigarettes. Later on, you're gonna start feeling pain when you're not smoking those cigarettes. So in a sense, it's to 
You're no longer in control. The drug is controlling you, forcing you to continue to take it. And this is one thing that could be very, very dangerous and cause, aside from phys physiological health problems, it could also cause a lot of social problems as well.